So these are um, what I could I could assume are New South Wales um, tended engines and tank engines. But if you are a um, New South Wales um, steam expert and you know everything about these trains, well, they are numberless and um, they don't have a class number on them either. So, oh, this one has a class number on it. It's uh, 1923. Maybe that's the year it was built or something. But it, like I said, if you're a steam uh, professional in New South Wales, you can please tell me what class locos these are. At uh, every loco I'm looking at. And... Uh, So, uh, we've got a New South Wales Garrett sitting right over there. There's more down, down that direction and this is the place. Durango Steam Railway and Museum. You can read it. Museum not yet open to public. Requirements to PO to PO Box 200 Diango 2453. If you want some information, you can put it into this box here that I've just discovered. Information here. As it says, private property, so we can't go in at all. There's a boiler or something like that over here. So yeah, there's coaches here and some on the other side. So this railway line, as I could probably say, um, is uh, disused. So no one, not even any trains come here besides these static displayed ones well yeah no drones no drones at all so um i guess that's pretty much it so if you want to come to this railway when it officially opens um you can uh, if this railway isn't open to the public yet you can just walk along this fence here on um I don't know what the name of the street is, but um, yeah, this is really interesting. It's amazing on how this um, person, who, the person who owns this property, managed to get all these old-fashioned um, tank engines and uh, tendered engines. I don't know what you call the tender engines these days, but I'm just going to call them tendered engines. And. Uh, don't forget about you, Garrett, in the back, number 6039. And it looks like a massive goods train in the back, too. There. And we put all these locomotives in this row. Yes. So that people can see them from the street as an interim thing. Not much point in saving them and then hiding them over in the middle somewhere. Uh, so we put them here deliberately yeah. so people can see them. Yeah. And there's lots of history that you cannot see. Those two engines the other side of the gap, those engines just in the Sydney Harbour Bridge in 1932. someone behind them nodding. I can't even fit this one in. <laughs> oh, well, you'll have to get a bit of a different angle. angle. <laughs> yeah, so we're very frustrated because we need to get it open so we've got additional income to accelerate projects. But the problem is we've saved them from being trapped and we've got them here where we can look after them. And we're still adding to the collection all the time.
there are 30 diesels here already. Most people don't realise that all your early diesels uh, have been cut up as that, apart from the ones that, the odd ones that could say, and they're part of history as well. The steam engines will always take pride of place, if you like, and we'll use steam engines to run trains and take people for rides. Because it's magnificent scenery. That's the so contributing the reason why we're here. It's all there. It's not currently serviceable. It's a little bit overgrown, mm -hmm. and there's some sleepers to put in and bits and pieces. But it's all quite, quite achievable. Yeah. But like any volunteer group, you've never got enough money and never got enough labour. But we've achieved the biggest collection in the world. That that alone is a massive achievement. We didn't set out to do that. That's just a measure of our passion. Um, and there's all sorts of interesting vehicles, freight wagons. Um, there's passenger cars, and sleeping cars, prison van, travelling post offices, um, lots of interesting things. Yeah. So how long is this, this track? The government, the government stopped using it in 1972. Um, we, we finally got possession of it in 1975. Um, we reopened it in 1986. It took three years to restore it. Um, and then there was a blue with the government over the use of it. And we lost our lease, so we sued the government for compensation, and we won the court case. So we ended up buying the line off the government for a dollar, and that settled the case. And we on sold the bottom half of the line to the other ones. Um, and the two groups will probably eventually interact, but we don't have to if we don't want to. It's a very slow line, very windy, very hilly, and that's that's part of its character. And where did it go to? Um, Glen Ray is the junction. That's about 20 miles north of Coffs Harbour on the North Coast Main Line. Yeah. There isn't any actual junction anymore. The railways took out so that's the rail. The club that, um, yeah. The David yeah. 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 We can go over and be closer. And Sing out if you've got any questions that you'd like me to answer. You probably know nearly as much as I do. I guess it's like on the interest. For sure. Yeah, oh, we're, we're fanatics. So <laughs> if there wasn't fanatics, nothing would get saved in this country because the government talks about it, but they don't actually do it. So passionate people say vintage cars and vintage aeroplanes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the hard part because the next generation doesn't volunteer at the same level as my generation. Um, so at some stage when there's sufficient income, there'll be some paid staff and that'll take up a bit of the slack of the lack of volunteers. I mean, even now though, there's a lack of volunteers. You've, you've never got enough no. to achieve everything you'd like to do. But I say again, we've, we've saved the biggest collection in the world. That's a massive job. Um, we didn't set out to do that, no. but, but that's what's happened. Yeah. The metal and who pays for all the metal? Oh, no, it's metal. not metal, it's, oh, it's bituminous it. sheeting. Um, <laughs> excuse me, we import it from Bless Italy because we don't make anything in Australia anymore. Okay. With these two tubes here. Um, so, but roofs have taken priority. Yes because there's no good of paint in the sides if the roof's leaking, it's still going to get ruined. And because they're all wood, um, and so, and after we've done, we've done all the roofs, um, and there's still a few to do, we're nearly finished that, but now we've started this sort of restoration, where we replace all the rotten windows, um, and paint them in, that's the authentic New South Wales colours, yeah. that's called Deep Indian Red, mm -hmm. um, and we've, inside the white sheets are hanging there mm -hmm. to stop the sun getting on the upholstery, because it blisters it in the varnish work. So we're bringing them all up to that standard. 37 carriages here up to that standard. Um, this one's got temporary sheets of metal over broken windows, but it'll it'll soon look like that one because it's they're working on it. Oh, we fix up the wood, yeah. Yeah, can't, you can step through the gap, you'll see what we're doing. There might be people working. Completely sheeted. Yeah, we just sheeted it as a temporary measure okay. until we can get to it because we can't do them all at once. No, of um, the collection's too. How many too, carriages are here? Do you know? There's 300 and um, well, 300 in round figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the crew yeah. here. That's all the ladders. Okay. See, so they're three quarters away. Yeah, still on it. Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a crew working. They must. They're gone for afternoon tea, I'd yeah. say. Yeah.
So we're working all the time. So, um, and it's not full restoration, but we're stabilising them. See, um, they're, they're all very stable now. Ooh, That's yeah. a sleeping car that was built in 1929. That has pressed metal floral pattern ceilings and silver plated hand basins. Yeah. So, and there's, people say, what do you need so many for? Well, they're all different, there's no two the same. It's a bit like collecting postage stamps. And someone wouldn't dare say to someone collecting stamps, why do you need so many? Because they're all different. Um, that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's why we're not maintaining it. It's, yes, because it's got, to, yes. it's got to be pulled down. Because this earthwork right. comes through here as well, sure. So this is the actual museum site. Um, this is what will open to the public first. It's, it's not set up for display just yet, yeah. but we're working towards that. And we've dug all this out. We've shifted 700,000 cubic metres of dirt, and that's ongoing. And we've laid all the tracks. There's nine kilometres of track that we've laid there, and everything on this site's coming in on our truck. Wow. So, well, that's right. <laughs> Come down this way a little bit, we'll see how we've got it laid out. Oh, you'll see, you can walk on either side. Yeah, so it's, it's two tracks close together, yes. then a corridor to walk through, yes. then two more tracks and another then a corridor. corridor. Yes, so you've got your because you don't need to see both sides of the train, no. um, and Are that saves space. Aiming to like maybe walk in and out a carriage here or there, or that's is it going to sure. be out? Yep, yep. Uh, mind you, that's another battle with council. Yeah, of course it um, is. Council won't allow us to admit able-bodied people to a carriage unless you can also get a wheelchair yeah. into that carriage. Right? So it's reverse discrimination nowadays. Yeah. Um, but there are, because most carriages you cannot get a wheelchair through the doorway, they're too narrow, they weren't made for them, they're too old. So that's, that's just ridiculous. I mean if you've got a beautiful carriage and you can't show able-bodied people in it, I mean... <laughs> Well, well, some wheelchair not, people would be embarrassed by that yes. situation, but there are carriages that do have doors big enough for wheelchairs and they'll be set up so people can get in. And we'll be having an argument with the council mm -hmm. in due course that we yeah. should be able to admit everybody mm -hmm. to other carriages where the wheelchairs can get in or not. Mm -hmm. That's a battle to be fought at another mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little tiny steam engines on the right of the path there. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's little engines like Thomas and Percy and the kids' stories. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, all the little engines from factories and collieries and steelworks. There were lots of little tiny engines mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And there's a whole row of diesels and electrics and there's mm -hmm. interurbans that uh, passenger cars. Yeah, and there's more sleeping cars and, and, and lots of freight wagons. Yes. Yeah. And there's things like there's a Centurion army tank here because we've got a railway wagon that was built specifically to carry Centurion army tanks. So you need the load to go on the wagon. It's a boring exhibit. That's just a fact. Yeah, so we—that's right. So we've collected vintage cars and vintage farm tractors and tanks and fire engines and all sorts of stuff that the railways used to carry because we've got the wagons that carry them. Yeah, that's our our diesel one. And all these everywhere you look, it's 40 shipping containers. They're all full of the things that mustn't get wet. So, for instance, this grey one here. That's full of all our wooden tractor trolleys. So we pump up and down trolleys and full trucks, and, and they'll stay in there until the first stage of the building goes up. And then we'll take them out and put them on display, and we'll get rid of the containers. But in the meantime, the containers are good value for storing things and keeping them dry and wet and close to the house for security.